our studios today, my guest is Kathy Ma, and with her is Dolly Devi, and both are uh, breast cancer survivors. As we all know, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So let's talk to them, what have they planned for this month, what they have done in the past for prevention and for research of breast cancer. Breast cancer touches everybody. I'm pretty sure we all know somebody either had the breast cancer, survived the breast cancer, or someone also passed with the breast cancer. So that's a disease that we cannot ignore. So thank you to both of you for coming in and talking about a very important subject, which is breast cancer. They say 5% of the men also get the breast cancer, but one out of six women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. So these are some stats, and I think it's alarming. So, Kathy, uh, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having us here today to talk about this topic. Yeah. Appreciate no, it. No problem. Yeah. And Dolly? <laughs> Thank you for having me again. Yes, yes. <laughs> and uh, you were here the other day, and we spoke in our language for another program. So, Kathy, talk a little bit about your involvement, how long you have been part of breast in a boat? Uh, well, I've been a part of breast in a boat, I think, since 2008. I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2005. Uh, that's when I started on my journey, and it is it is a journey. It's, uh, it's a yeah. whole series of events. But I started with the breast in a boat in 2008. It was actually suggested to me by a, a co-worker, a colleague, who, when I told him that I'd been diagnosed with breast cancer, he said, well, you'll have to take up dragon boating. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't yeah. know what he was talking about. But he knew from attending the local um, regattas, like Concord Pacific, the big breath, um, dragon boat regattas in Vancouver, that there was a team called A Breast and a Boat, who were all uh, breast cancer survivors, and um, that, that looked like a lot of fun. So I joined in 2008 and uh, paddled for a few years, and then at some point decided that I would help coach, so I've been a coach now for, um, I'm going to take mm -hmm. <laughs> How many years? Many years. I've been years. coaching and steer, yeah, and I also steer, so. Yeah. Uh, I think that a breast and a boat is such a good uh, organization, and it's, it's such a good thing for women who've gone through breast cancer, so I can't say enough about it. But staying active and staying healthy is the important part. True. Yes, yes, it is. And you, yeah. Dolly? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, s I joined um, Dragon Boating, uh, a breast in a boat, in 2018. Okay. And um, ever since, I've just loved it. Because it's not just coming out of breast cancer, but I think it's the people that you meet on the team. Yes. We become like such a close friends. It's more than a friend. We become families. True. And I think that is really important that it coming out of something like that, and yeah. having met all these people that are so strong, so positive, and dragon boating, and it just going on the water with them is totally a different world. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that is really important. You know, if you have never dragon boat, this is what you should do coming out of breast cancer because it's totally different. Your whole uh, life, the perspective of your life totally changes you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when were you diagnosed? I was diagnosed in 2016. Okay. Yes. And do you have to wait a certain period of time before you be able to paddle? Because these are exercises. Uh, yes, well, Kathy way. would be able to answer that much better, I think. Yeah. Well, it, it depends on what treatment you've been through. Okay. Um, you definitely want to recover from your surgery. But um, over the years, they found that exercise is helpful not only for after you've had breast cancer, but they actually prescribe exer exercise now for when women are going through chemotherapy. You wouldn't join a breast in a boat until you were were finished your treatment and you felt strong and uh, fairly healthy, but you don't have to wait a long period of time. We have people who join six months after their treatment is, has ended. Mm -hmm. The best thing is to get your doctor's advice on whether you're ready to, to get in a boat and paddle. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have in a boat, we would have 20 to 24 paddlers mm -hmm. and a steers and a collar up front and so if you for women who are still not feeling strong I think it took me I think five years before I felt like I was back to 
normal, whatever that was. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, if you, you can get in a boat load and you'd be very welcome to be part of our team. And, um, uh -huh. and everyone, it, it's very inclusive. If you've been through breast cancer, we want you on the boat. Julie, I was going to also say that some people, when they are diagnosed with breast cancer, they think it's the end of the world for them. Mm -hmm. Life is done, life is over. And when I see both of you women sitting in here, yeah. energy you have and so much to look forward for, uh, it's, it doesn't look like it's a dead end for no. anybody. No. It's no, just, it's, it's I mean, it's, it's one of those things that you were diagnosed, you recovered, and you're giving it back and keeping healthy, mm -hmm. yes, right? That's very important. And, and yes. I think that is important. So you want to talk a little bit about your journey, how long it took you, and then how long did you have to wait to do this exercise? Um, I joined actually, I think it was a um, year and a half um, because my whole um, treatment was almost one year, three months. Mm -hmm. So I think after that I've joined a drug in the within six months I think I joined. Mm -hmm. um, that was 2018. Mm -hmm. So, um, and ever since I've been uh, dragon boating and I think, like Kathy said, you have to get your doctor um, if they say it's a permission, yeah. if you're okay. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, my doctor had told me, oncologist said, yeah, you, you fine, you can go ahead with it. So that's when I joined. And uh, so a lot of people look at us and, you know, think, oh, they didn't go through everything. We went through hell. We went through um, surgeries, radiation, and then, you know, Chemo. chemotherapy, you know, everything. Yeah. So I think having a positive attitude and meeting the wonderful ladies that have also gone through breast cancer can change a lot about your lifestyle, eating healthy. And dragon boating is another big exercise and very important for people that have limb knots taken out. Mm -hmm. And I think this is really important for them to come and join us and uh, mm -hmm. be a part of a dragon boat. Mm -hmm. Is there a certain age that people mm -hmm. or women are diagnosed? Could you be 20? Mm -hmm. Could you be 89 or mm -hmm. 79 for that matter? Is it between or is it certain age like 40 to 50, 50 to 60, mm. no? Um, we have um, Judy who's 80, 87, 88. Yeah, so she's uh, dragon boating oh, with us. Yeah, so we have, uh, for dragon boating, we have people as old as 85, 86 yeah. years old, but I think the uh, question about the, when you can get diagnosed. When, when can you? You could be diagnosed as early as in your 20s, that's mm -hmm. rare, but mm -hmm. um, it's possible to be diagnosed with breast cancer when you're in your 20s all the way up to in your 80s and, and um, it's considered more aggressive the earlier you are that you're diagnosed so you do want to get in and, and have it checked out sooner if you suspect that you have a lump or you have uh, an issue when you're younger. It can be more prevalent in people who have a certain segment of the population, not large, but mm -hmm. about 5% of the population it is her hereditary and they have a much higher chance of getting it. Um, that's the case in my family. Mm -hmm. And so uh, if it's hereditary, it can be as young as 20. And the difficulty that those women have is that they no one takes it seriously because they're so young. So that can be very difficult for them. Um, the other one is men can get breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, if you have the, if it is a hereditary in your family, mm -hmm they can have the same risk of getting breast cancer as the average woman. So a uh, man who would carry the gene mutation should be Checked. being vigilant yes. and checking for it as well. And all of the same things apply mm -hmm. to them that the earlier you can catch it, the better your prognosis is going to be. So uh -huh. that's a really important message. If you catch it early, uh -huh. it saves and lives. I think the yeah. advantage with the men is they don't have big breasts and maybe when they are doing self-examination, exactly. whatever, they may be able to diagnose early, I don't know, mm -hmm. is an assumption, but sometimes women who have bigger breasts mm -hmm. is very hard when you are doing self-examination, mm -hmm. uh, that is very hard to see where the lumps and the bumps are. I think this, even if it's so small, like mine was very small, I think you should get it checked. Okay. Um, it, you don't have to wait for it to get bigger, but the sooner, the better. Yes. It prevents, you know, from... Uh -huh. uh, 
So do you suggest that everyone, and there's a man and women, for the men the percentage is much lower than the women, um, should they be asking the doctors if they know that there is a breast cancer in the family, with the grandmother or maybe aunt, or how far does it go back? There are um, certain criteria that the uh, person, the the breast cancer, uh, or sorry, the the cancer agency, agency of BC has in their genetics clinic for oh. when they consider it might be a genetic. So the younger uh, age that people in your family have been diagnosed with breast cancer, the more likely it might be genetic. So in in my family, it was a I had a sister who was diagnosed with breast cancer under the age of thirty five. Mm -hmm. And my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. The two are linked on, on one of the, a couple of the gene mutations that uh, give you a higher prevalence of, of, of breast cancer in your family. So my mother was diagnosed with ovarian cancer under the age of 50. And either of those factors at that time would have been considered worth investigating whether it was genetic. But um, for the general population, uh, environmental factors, um, lifestyle, that sort of thing, uh, also are contributing. So if you have people in your family who are older who get breast cancer in, say, their 70s or 60s, that's not necessarily an indication it's genetic. Mm. But it is worth having a conversation with your family doctor. Mm. And uh, the cancer agency does have a genetic screening program where they look at certain factors and um, determine if it's worth going for further testing to see if they can find that genetic link, and if there is a genetic, there if there is a reason genetically for why it's higher in your family, then they can test others for it, and you can take preventative actions, which mm -hmm. is is really powerful. It uh, is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm part of yeah. it, and you are as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we love. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dolly, I know you don't have no daughter, but you do have a son. Yes, I do. Yeah, and we were talking about him yesterday, so... Do you think he should be one of the candidates that he should be watching out uh, to make sure that? Well, I was um, told, yes, yes. He, he did actually, um, under my um, testing, that he also had to go for a test um, last year. Mm -hmm. I mean, not last year, excuse me, before COVID, 2019. Because on his dad's side, he, okay. his um, aunties had uh, colon cancer. So he had been got tested for it because it might be in his lifetime that he might he might not have it yeah because so it doesn't matter you have a son or a daughter mm -hmm. yes you know it depends on each side of the families mm -hmm. their parents so I was going to ask you that a breast in a boat is one of the movements that you have started to bring awareness and education to the other survivors to come and join the team at the same time you are raising funds for research that maybe we may be able to live in a society free of breast cancer, right? So do you think the people who are survivors of breast can cancer in Canada and BC, they're aware of your this project? Do they know about it? Do they participate in that? Or is only a handful of the women, when you say there are 25 of us, and I'm pretty sure that when we look at the numbers, there are going to be a lot more than 25 who have survived breast mm -hmm. cancer and living in Metro Vancouver. So uh, well, how do they find out well, about this movement and how can they get involved? It's just like talking, just like you are doing mm -hmm. today, and uh, going out and talking to the media and get the message out. Is that how you mm -hmm. want to reach out to the women who are not aware of yeah. your... Well, one of the means we usually achieve some sort of awareness is at the local Dragon Boat Regattas, but due to COVID, oh, <laughs> those yeah. haven't been helped. Yes, so yeah. we are quite concerned right now about getting the message out. So a breast in a boat doesn't raise money directly for research, but we do participate in events such as the Run for the Cure, and we do mm -hmm. support the idea of, of, of research. What our goal is, is to show women that if they if they join a breast cancer crew, a bre uh, dragon boat crew, that they can lead a healthy, active life after a diagnosis of, of breast yes. cancer. We're like a support group, but we don't sit around in a circle in a room just talking about breast cancer. But if you're in a boat full of women 
who've had breast cancer and an issue comes up or you've got a test result you're worried about, there's certainly somebody else on the boat will have been through it and, and so that's where they can provide the support. support. But generally we have a lot of fun. So this whole movement did start in Vancouver in 1996 and it started as a medical study because the yeah. advice back then was if you'd had breast cancer surgery, you should not um, do anything that involves activity with your arms. No uh, golf or knitting or tennis, no lifting yeah. heavy dishes over your head. And Dr. Don McKenzie, who was a sports medicine doctor, thought that that advice didn't sound wise, that you would be limiting people's mm -hmm. activity. So the study was in 1996, and. Um, they, they uh, trained to race in a dragon boat and they went to the, con the uh, dragon boat regatta and that was the end of that. No one got lymphedema, which was the worry. Mm -hmm. And the women on the boat were so excited about the, um, the benefits of dragon boating, both exercise, but also that social connection, connection of being in a boat together, that it, they formed a society, the Abreast in a Boat Society, and the following year, crews started forming um, not only in Canada, but around the world. And now there are 200 teams around the world, including um, the one in Fiji that Dolly got going recently. So uh, there are teams spread around, but there certainly are people who are not aware that we exist and that they can get in a dragon boat with us. Mm -hmm. Abreast in a Boat itself is still a thriving organization. And in, that, in the lower mainland, mm -hmm. we have five um, five crews who compete and a sixth crew for women who, who want the social aspect of paddling together. So we have crews in Vancouver, at uh, one out of Granville Island, one um, out of the uh, other end of False Creek at the Olympic Village. Mm -hmm. We have a crew in Port Moody, one in Fort Langley, and one in, in Ladner. Mm -hmm. So they, we have plenty of opportunities in the Lower Mainland. Um, for women to join a breast cancer dragon boat crew and find out what the fun is about. So any of those locations they can go to yeah. anywhere, but they live. Is there a certain spot. period of time or certain mm -hmm. months? Do you do it over mm -hmm. the summertime when the weather is nice, so they can have fun in the ocean or in the river, or wherever they're mm -hmm. going? And it's a day out. Is a yeah. kind of fun day out for them. Yeah. At the same time, you don't talk about that. At the same time, you know what the purpose behind it. Yeah. Because you all have been through the same thing, right? Yeah, exactly. We've all had the same uh, experience. Um, our paddling season in Vancouver, in the Lower Mainland, uh, because we, our, our paddling venues don't freeze over like they might yeah. in Ontario. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so our paddling uh, season is April through to the end of June. Um, okay. And then beyond that, we sometimes enter other regattas, uh, go as composite crews. Com um, to other locations uh, such as uh, Penticton or, or uh, mm -hmm. uh, Nanaimo. But our paddling season for a breast in a boat is April through to the end of June. Uh, there are dragon boat crews. My mother belongs to, stepmother belongs to one up in Kamloops and their paddling uh, is generally over the summer because of it's April they're still dealing with. Uh, Cold so did the breast in the boat started in BC in Vancouver? Yes, so this did. is the founding uh, mm -hmm. organization, yes, and then it founded. spread all over the world or in so many different countries. Yes, and you just mentioned that they started in Fiji, yes. and just one or two times I think, and then with the pandemic under lockdown, so nobody was able to do it anymore. So this is uh, this is like uh, which is so good that you have started that and become like international event all over the world because yeah. women are not only diagnosed with breast yeah. cancer in Canada but everywhere else it's all over the world all yes. over the world right exactly so they have a movement and they have got something for them to do yeah as well yes yeah. so um, for us to um, have how people can get in touch with yes. us um, as you asked. You can, we have a, a website, so abreastinaboat.com, that's all one word, abreastinaboat.com, and you can email us there at uh, either new members at abreastinaboat.com or membership at abreastinaboat.com, mm -hmm. 
and find out how to join. So because our season is April, we're um, leading up to that. We do have a meeting in the end of November, November 27th, where women who are interested in joining a breast in a boat um, can find out more information. It's a meeting on Zoom, and we would outline all of the um, requirements and, and what's involved and how to dress when you're out on the water, everything that's involved. And then what would happen is we would uh, form crews, and they would meet probably in February and discuss their season, and the paddling would start at the end of March or first part of April all the way through. And we train twice a week in the official season and mm -hmm. go to a couple of regattas and, mm -hmm. and meet there, meet other women who uh, have had breast cancer on other crews, mm -hmm. race against them, and uh, have a lot of fun. Yeah, I think yeah. you asked because for the age as well, right? It's ages. Uh, the, I, think, uh, I was going to also ask you, Dolly, yeah. that there are so many people, actually people of color and all mm -hmm. that, even though you are a survivor, you don't want to come out, you don't want yeah. to talk about it, you want to keep that to yourself. So those people that are, are survivors, how, what kind of message you want to give it to them so that they can be part of this team? Mm -hmm. That there is nothing to hide. We all as women have mm -hmm. survived that and they have survived as well mm -hmm. to come and build a movement so that you can support other women as well. Yeah, I mean, in our belt we have from all different uh, yes, yeah. uh, you know, uh, races and um, there is um, it's nothing to be ashamed of, first of all, when you're diagnosed with breast cancer. Yes. I mean, if you come in the, in Dragon Boat with us, you'll see there's so many different people from different parts of um, a world and um, mm -hmm. uh, also from, you know, here in different races. But we all bond together because we've all traveled in the same journey or experienced the same things in our lives. And I think um, it, it doesn't have to be that you in a need to suffer in silence. Why don't you come and join us and see the fun we have and how fun it is to be dragon boating with us. And of course, if you have your limb knots taken out, this is one best exercise you could do. Yeah, right. That's really important. So you're putting it out to the people that are sitting and watching you today to coming out and talking so passionately about that and just come and join the team because you're looking for volunteers as well, right? You want to grow your movement. You want to make this much bigger because, like I say, there are a lot more women out there. Yes. They are survivors, so mm -hmm. they don't have to be alone. Yeah. Correct? yeah. We've had so much fun. We, we yeah. don't want to keep it to ourselves. Yeah, right? no, we always, we we always have fun. <laughs> yeah. We want to and share that message. You know, it's not just that we just go dragon, but after that we get together and do yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So it's not just that we go on the water and then we go home. No, no. we always go out for coffee or lunches. So we also socialize together yes. and we share our experience with each other. If you have any questions you need to ask, yeah. there's somebody who um, knows answer to that question because yeah. she has been through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very fun to come and join us because, you know, we are as, as a family there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is, you're forming a support group. Yes. So those of yes. you that are watching today, so these women are here openly and they invite you if you are a survivor of breast cancer you can give them a call there is a website mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. what's that website abreastinaboat.com so abreastinaboat.com mm -hmm. thank you to both of you and looking at the clock we are almost towards the end of it thank you so much for coming in and talking about uh, breast in a boat thank, thank you for you. having us thank you for having us Oh, oh, oh.
शामों सहर कोई ये बता दे कि मैं क्या करूं मेरी चाहतों से है तू बेखबर दिल में है क्या कह न सकूं कह भी न सुन से जुड़ी मेरी सब मन 